one to watch, I think, is the dollar. The dollar is really important now. And the dollar is very strong. I do expect central banks to try and slow it down at some point. But the dollar going up basically creates credit issues for the global economy. We've got, we've already seen places like Nigeria running short of dollars. We're seeing it in Sri Lanka. We're seeing it at the periphery. It always happens at the periphery first and then comes back. So there is liquidity issues further out the system. So just keep an eye on the dollar. The more the dollar goes up, the more liquidity issues you're likely to face and the world struggles with it. So just keep around that. Look, there's big things to think. So I've, I've, covered, I've covered gold um, in the update that I did, which is right now, you don't know who owns what assets. I, you don't own anything because the government's taken it away from you, which is, we've kind of known, but it's been writ large in the last few weeks. And I think, you know, even though gold's coming off, they had a yeah, good squeeze higher, I think we're going to see more action there. The one to watch, I think, is the dollar. The dollar is really important now, and the dollar is very strong. I do expect the central bank to try and slow it down at some point, but the dollar going up basically creates credit issues for the global economy. We've got, we've already seen places like Nigeria running short of dollars. We're seeing it in Sri Lanka. We're seeing it at the periphery. It always happens in the periphery first and then comes back. So there is liquidity issues further out the system. So just keep an eye on the dollar. The more the dollar goes up, the more liquidity issues you're likely to face and the world struggles with it. So just keep your eye on that. Basically, this notion of what's happening with the dollar, the dollar keeps rising. Give us your context on that and how it ties in uh, with what we just heard. So, this is going to tie back to Bill Tye as well. So, Bill Tye talks about petrodollars and electrodollars, and that crypto is the electrodollar based around electricity, while the petrodollar was based around supply and demand for oil. So, we've been in a petrodollar system since we floated um, off the gold stand. Now, what does that mean? It meant that the US was one of the biggest importers of crude oil in the world, if not the biggest one. So they would spend dollars. These dollars floated around the global system, keeping it liquid. But the shale oil revolution, as Russell points out, did the opposite. It meant that the US didn't need to import as much. Yes, it has to import some different grades of crude and stuff like that, but generally speaking, it's self-sufficient in oil. So that is a lot less dollars into the global system. So if there's a lot less dollars in the global system, the dollar goes up. It's like peak burning. It's like Bitcoin supply, 